Hi, everybody. My name is Reggie Gackett, and I want to welcome you to the 10th webinar of the year uh, and the first webinar in the 2020 Spring Family Webinar Series. I am the Assistant Director in the First Year Center, and tonight I'm joined by my colleague, Leslie Husted, who's the Executive Director of Campus Life. We're excited that you've chosen to join us for tonight's conversation. Some information before we get started. First, you will notice that you've been given the ability to submit messages to us during this webinar using the chat function. Please use this feature to ask us questions. These questions will only be seen by staff in the First Year Center and our panelist, Leslie. Two of our professional staff within the First Year Center are helping to field these questions. We will answer those that we find applicable to the audience as a large and on this webinar and we'll respond to the more nuanced or personal questions via email next week. Let's go ahead and make sure you know how to use the chat feature. Send us a chat with the location you're watching from and we'll name a few of these on air. While you do that, this webinar is being recorded live. Next week, we will upload this webinar to the families.wustol.edu website. Lastly, in a moment, we will hear from our panelists about student engagement and leadership on campus here at WashU. If something our panelist says sparks a question, don't forget to chat us. After hearing from our panelists, we'll move into the Q&A portion of the evening. Before passing things along to Leslie, I wanna share some of the places that people are joining us in from. We have families tuning in from St. Louis, Missouri, Anchorage, Alaska, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, among other places. Mm -hmm. Now, since I know you all want to hear more about campus life, I will turn it over to Leslie. Thanks, Reggie. Um, I am so excited to be here tonight to talk about student engagement and student involvement on campus. Um, and I do have a, a slideshow to walk you through some of the resources that we have uh, on campus that we'll review first, and then we'll go into um, the questions that I'm really excited to hear from you all about uh, what you're most interested in hearing about. Um, before we get started with the slideshow, just wanted to let you know that this is sort of a culmination of my experience working with campus activities, leadership development, student government, um, and those co-curricular experiences that we'll be talking about. Um, I've been in this field for about 30 years and really enjoy working with students every day, um, uh, learning something from them every day through the process. Um, we do have some student testimonials as part of the slideshow that um, will give you a little bit of a glimpse of the way that students understand their co-curricular experience and how it assists them um, in, that pro in their uh, job search or their academic endeavors. So first thing I thought would be helpful is to share with you our mission statement for Campus Life. It's an office that um, operates here on campus and um, we really work to empower students to discover and define themselves and their communities through advising programs and resources. Um, the, the key words here are discovering and defining themselves, so who they are and who they want to be, and identifying their communities or finding their place on campus. We um, hold that near and dear to our heart and work with our students daily to help them succeed in those endeavors. My name is Taylor Chen and I'm a senior in the Olin Business School studying finance with a minor in computer science. I am a business owner um, on campus involved in the STEP entrepreneurial program. Um, this year I am the senior class president and I'm also a member of the WashU Hip Hop Union. This summer when I interned with City, um, I utilized my um, problem solving skills that I developed while facing um, business challenges and having to come up with innovative business solutions. And I also um, used my leadership skills um, as class president to um, be an effective leader in a group setting. So we'll hear from other students throughout the slideshow, but really what, we're, um, what we really want to talk about is how the co-curricular experience impacts our students in making connections on campus, finding communities on campus, and um, helping them discover the best way that they can make an impact on campus and um, beyond. And so the first thing that's important to understand is really how we define co-curricular experience and why that's important to our students and our Washington University community. 
This is really based in some student development theory that's important to the work that we do in campus life. Um, Aston's theory of involvement focuses on student involvement um, and really uh, drills home the fact that the more involved a student is, the higher they are successful in their academic pursuits on campus. And Aston defines a highly involved student as one who um, works very hard with their academic schedule um, and uh, devotes a lot of time to studying, spends a lot of time on campus, participates actively in student organizations and interacts frequently with faculty members and other students. And through the co-curricular experience and really the, the guidance that we hope that we give them on a daily basis in their endeavors, um, our students find these four components pretty readily as they interact on campus. So if you look at this overall use of um, time in a, in, a, in a college, in an average college student's day, um, you can see that there are um, considerable amount of times that are spent outside of the classroom. And so um, you're looking at this educational activities, three and a half hours, um, and then looking at all of the other times that um, students have to spend their days on campus. What, what our goal is, um, is we really want to make sure that the way that they're choosing to spend those hours outside of the classroom or outside of the actual time that they're spending in an academic classroom um, in the best ways possible to make sure that they are succeeding and will be successful with those academic pursuits. And if you're wondering, I have talked with our students and 8.8 .8 hours of sleep is probably not what they're getting on an average basis. Um, and so that probably opens up some extra time in the daytime that they can be um, doing some other things. So our, our role on campus through campus life and through helping students understand what's available for them in their co-curricular life is really to help them understand and apply the things that they're doing outside of the classroom, helping them succeed inside of the classroom. So some of the ways that we, um, we help our students understand uh, some of that good work that they can do outside of the classroom and that we really uh, consider part of the co-curricular experience is that student group interaction that Aston talks about, and that can happen through fraternities and sororities or more than 400 other student groups on campus. Community service or service learning, um, work that students do as student employees on campus. Uh, we in Campus Life employ um, all, almost 100 students in different capacities uh, through student employment opportunities. So they're paid, but they're also interacting on campus, spending that time on campus in a focused way. Um, and that allows, that, that qualifies as a co-curricular experience. We've got many leadership positions that may or may not be paid that also contribute to students learning how to apply those leadership lessons that they are learning outside of the classroom to endeavors that could relate to internships or future employment. Um, undergraduate research, simply attending events and participating in the community um, really qualifies as a co-curricular experience, participating in sports, whether that be sports clubs or varsity athletics, and then really looking at um, participating fully in the tutoring opportunities and study groups that happen, and then all of the activities that are happening within the residential college or residential living experience. All of these fall under the umbrella of co-curricular experience. My name is Stephen Kish. I am majoring in economics in the College of Arts and Sciences and finance in the Olin Business School, and I'm a junior here at WashU. Last year, I served as Vice President of Administration for Student Union, and I'm still involved there. I'm a member of Leaders in Interpersonal Violence Education and my fraternity, Alpha Delta Phi. I think the biggest thing that I've learned, and I think Student Union's a really good example, is kind of about what leadership means to me. Um, I think that it's been really impactful to kind of see and practice how you can drive change through a large organization by connecting people with a message, and that's something that I definitely did not know um, how to start with before I joined Student Union. And so one of the things that you might be asking is how do you make sure that your student is being is finding these connections on campus? What's the easiest way that are that your students can understand what these opportunities are and how they can get involved? 
And what I would say as the first and foremost go to is the website wugo.wustl.edu. And um, this, on the screen, you'll see a screenshot of really the home page that allows you to choose whether you want to look for an organization or events on campus, upcoming news and events, or any sort of forms that could be used for applications or um, involvement inquiries. So this is a screenshot. The next, the next slide is just a screenshot of the um, events calendar. And so this is the thing that we really, really push for our students to make sure that they are documenting the upcoming events that are being sponsored by their student groups. Um, because we have literally hundreds of events happening on a monthly basis that are uh, showcased through the events module on WUGO. And as you can see along the left-hand side of the screen, you can um, search based on keywords, based on dates. Um, you can even um, select the different kinds of categories of student groups that you're interested. And then um, we have a, a few perks listed. Free food is one of them, but a few perks that some students search by as well. But this event calendar is a really handy handy way to make sure that when your students are saying there's nothing happening on campus, um, you can check this out and see that there often is uh, lots and lots of things happening on campus. Um, one of the best ways to um, find out the, uh, the things that you can get involved in is through the activities fair. We have one of these both in the fall and in the spring. And as I mentioned, our student groups, we have a healthy uh, population of student groups and they are all physically in one place. So a student can walk around and sign up or inquiry about um, the types of activities that they're most interested in. And this is really when student groups are pushing those first general, um, those general board meetings or those general Meet, member meetings at the beginning of the year. So even though it's spring, our students are actively recruiting new members to um, their groups and organizations, and the activities fair is the place to find out uh, the best things about those groups. And that's happening this Friday. The other um, resource that we have is what we call the GPS series or Group Pathways to Success. We have an advising program that advises all of our student groups and then also many resources that we make available to help students learn about more involvement activities. Um, one of the things that I, I really believe in strongly is some of the best ways to make connections on campus is simply attending events where nothing is really the responsibility. All you have to do is show up and enjoy yourself. And so this slide outlines um, a handful of the events that we have on a regular basis um, sponsored through Campus Life but held in the Danforth University Center that offers students an opportunity to gather and really just hang out. Um, one of those programs is Tuesday Tea at 3. We just finished it today, the first one for the semester, and it's literally tea at 3 um, with some scones thrown in for good measure. But um, students come, line up, get a mug, um, fill up, and really just um, hang out and make um, some connections with their friends. Sometimes faculty come over, so it's a gathering point. Um, we also sponsor a, almost a week's worth of activities right before finals that serve as study breaks to help students sort of center their, themselves before they um, go into finals and then offer um, uh, connections to tutoring and um, some teaching assistance and some study, study guides as well. We also have a monthly duck and donuts program. Um, again, stop by, grab a donut and a duck um, uh, as the Danforth University Center, it's a duck thing. Um, but then also being able to pick up uh, a schedule of events for the things coming up for the next month in the building. I'm Nia Plump. I'm majoring in African and African American Studies with a minor in writing, and I'm a junior. So I'm involved in student union. <laughs> I'm, I used to be on Senate and now I am the Vice President of Administration after about a year, about a year of serving on Senate. Um, I'm also a part of TRUTH, which stands for Teaching Racial Understanding Through Honesty. Um, it's a peer-led facilitation group that focuses on um, racial equity and things of that nature and facilitates conversation and dialogue around racial equity. Um, and then my third thing is that I'm a Goldman Fellow, which is through the Gephardt Institute, and it's a St. Louis immersive experience that allows you to work for a nonprofit of your choosing. Definitely, out of all these different things that I'm involved in, a general trend is um, experiencing and creating a healthy work-life balance. 
I think that um, this has allowed me to understand my boundaries as a student and a worker, and by creating those, understanding my boundaries, I know where to push myself and where not to push myself, so that I'm catering to the, like, I'm creating the best Nia that I can be, basically. So um, we talked a lot about creating, uh, defining yourself and discovering your community. And so I'm just gonna do a quick overview of some of the community aspects that we have as part of co-curricular experience. Um, as I mentioned before, we have over 400 student groups that really represent every size, shape, and interest that our students would have. Um, all of these student groups have been created by students for students, and you can see all of them listed on wugo.wustel.edu um, to figure out um, what kinds of groups exist on campus. Uh, just um, generally speaking, we ha have this slide that outlines some of the ways that student groups define themselves. And you can see that the top three areas that students are really interested in is really exploring civic and community engagement, um, really looking at ways to connect with their academic experience, and then exploring diversity and inclusion. Um, but other areas, cultural, sports, recreation, health and wellness, all of those elements are um, represented as part of our pretty vibrant student group community. We have a, um, also a very vibrant fraternity and sorority community. We have about 35% of our students, um, which translates to 2,500-ish students that are involved in either a fraternity or a sorority on campus. And this slide outlines the different types of organizations that we have that make up that community, um, including Interfraternity Council Chapters, which is IFC, um, National Panhellenic Council, um, which we have four representations of the um, Divine Nine on our campus. Those are citywide chapters. And then we have nine um, Women's Panhellenic Association sororities represented on campus, uh, which equals 25 um, in all. Um, if you add up those numbers, it doesn't come out right because one of our um, chapters is a multicultural group um, called Alpha Psi Lambda, which represents our Latinx uh, community on campus, um, and they are part of that community as well. We also have a variety of leadership programs that offer an individual student, so you don't have to be a part of a student group or um, a fraternity or a sorority to engage in these activities. Um, one of those is really focused on emerging leaders, so those um, students who are really looking to sort of explore what those leadership opportunities are. Um, another one is focused, um, Destination Q is, is our um, fall-based program that also has some spin-off programs in the spring that focuses on our, on our LGBTQIA population and really exploring that social identity in um, a way to uh, work with um, being able to um, leverage that in a way that is positive in terms of community building. And then um, we just had a cohort of students come back from Disney World um, that happened over winter break uh, to explore some of those connections between leadership, uh, understanding leadership in a corporate and um, more sort of branding and marketing aspect. And also they got to go to all the parks. They love that too. My name is Arjun Kalra. Um, I'm a major in philosophy, neuroscience, psychology, and the College of Arts and Sciences, and I am currently a sophomore. I'm involved in student union as budget committee chair. Um, I'm also a each one teach one tutor at the Kip Victory School, and I am a chemistry peer led team leader. I think a big thing of being a pre-med and eventually going to medical school um, is first of all dealing with responsibility. Um, I think that's a very important trait once you start practicing a career in healthcare at, in any facet. Um, so I think all of these three commitments have kind of shown me like what does that responsibility look like? Um, it's not directly comparable to like dealing with someone's health, um, but it has shown me like what responsibility can look like for me. Um, and then also it's shown me um, kind of like criticism. I think it's very important because especially when you go into a future job in healthcare, you always want to be improving and taking in criticism um, to best serve the people that you are trying to help. Um, so I think learning on how to best take criticism and use that to better myself has been really helpful.
And the last part of this presentation is really just about impact, really the so what, who cares. So your students are involved on campus. We want them to be involved and engaged, and we certainly want them to have a great time while they're here at Washington University. Um, but how does that really translate to the impact um, that it helps and makes, makes to them in terms of their next steps? And one of the ways that this really comes to um, comes into focus is through student union, which is our student government on campus. It's a it's a pretty um, um, large um, uh, administrative, judicial, and legislative branch of student government that includes uh, over 200 students in leadership positions that really make a difference on forming um, what the students want on community with their community here on campus. And so um, we really work closely with our student union in order to provide that experience, but then also to make sure that we are doing what the students need for us to do. And um, Socially Just Leadership is another leadership program that we um, instituted this year that is really working on ways in which those leadership lessons that are being learned on campus can then impact the greater community, um, the uh, nation and the world, really. Uh, we are taking a group of students to Chicago over spring break to interact with the community there in all facets to learn a little bit more about um, what that um, social and civic and community organizing looks like. And the last program that I would just want to talk about is really um, the Leadership Education and Development, which is a cohort of students who are um, being developed to then train and develop students um, in a way that in impacts and changes their, um, their experience here at WashU. So again, it's students, it's peer-led, it's students delivering to students. And so this all kind of hopefully ties back to our mission statement to empower students to discover and define themselves in their communities um, through advising programs and resources. And our goal is really just to work with students to make the most of their experience here at Washington University. And I'm really excited to hear any questions that you have about um, how we do this and how we can do it better. Leslie, thank you so much for sharing all of this important information. While hearing you speak, I wanted to ask an initial question um, that I think many of our family members may be wondering. Um, what are some first steps that a student who wants to create a new student group may be able mm -hmm. to take? So that process is actually pretty simple. Um, we really, what I would advise is that students just stop into the campus life office. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have a registration process that we um, have students fill out a pretty short information about what their student group is all about, and they are registered in a matter of minutes. Uh, that gives them access to student spaces so they can recruit and have meetings and those sorts of things. And then if they're interested in going through the student union recognition process, that's how they then gain financial support for, for those activities and programs that they want to do. Great, thank you. We will now move on to the question and answer portion of the webinar. As a reminder, chat us with the questions that you have and we'll answer as many as possible during this webinar. Leslie, for our first question, do all student groups on campus have an advisor? How does that work? So, no. The, the short answer is no, not, not all student groups have an advisor. We do advise and require that certain student groups, depending on the amount of money that they have access to, the types of events that they do, um, the, the volume of students that they impact, that those students have a staff or faculty advisor, and we can help a student group find that if we require that of them. Um, that would, that pretty much is mm, just under a third of our student groups are student groups that require staff or faculty advisors. Um, other than that, student groups are, are able to function without a staff or faculty advisor, and then we in Campus Life, the staff that um, um, advises, serves as the GPS advisors, mm -hmm. we can help them with any contracts that they have or any questions, any policy questions that they might have. Have, um, and also like navigating the financial um, requirements. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. How can students find research opportunities as a first year on campus? So we do have um, many student groups who are very closely tied with academic programs. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I would suggest that students, uh, always, students are the best resource for students. And so for students who are particularly interested in a certain field or a certain um, exploring different avenues of a major, to really look into connecting with those students who um, are part of the student group that aligns with that major or that academic program. Um, and then often, 
we have lots of interaction with faculty from those programs that are either um, partnering with those student groups or advising those student groups or are part of programs that those student groups um, sponsor that allow for uh, really solid access for those students. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And for family members, in March we will be hosting a webinar about student research that goes mm -hmm. a little bit more in depth of what that process looks like once the students are in it. Our next question, what support exists for students who are still experiencing a lack of connection to campus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think that there are a, a, a variety of ways that students who are still trying to find their niche on campus can explore some, some different ways to do that. Um, as I mentioned, the Spring Activities Fair is happening on Friday. Um, it is a it's a large group together in a in a in a gym and so it is a little bit overwhelming but um, it also is really high energy and certain um, student groups have demonstrations of what they're doing um, and so that's a really kind of fun energetic way to explore some additional um, student group activities um, but if that is something that might be a little bit overwhelming to your student, um, I would, what we call WUGO is really a virtual activities fair. And so to do some um, searching through that to really determine what groups you're most interested in. And then you can just submit an, a, a message. You can just post a message that will go to that primary contact of that group um, to say, hey, can you tell me when your next meeting is? Are you open for new members, which all student groups are all the time? Um, and then find out that information in a more sort of one-on-one -on -one way. Um, so that's another that's another element. And if that if that is also um, a little bit confusing, um, certainly they can come into our office, make an appointment with the GPS advisor, and we can um, help them sort of navigate those things. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. As students continue uh, through their time at WashU and apply for leadership positions with within either an organization or a department, what support exists to prepare students for these roles? Well, I do think that the GPS advising workshops um, are helpful mm -hmm. to, um, especially if a student is um, is 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 a student who likes to prepare in those mm -hmm. ways. Um, lots of really good tricks and tips are given through those um, advising workshops. I, I, I think probably the most important thing is for, to be able to have the student walk through some self-reflection about what it is that they want to gain from those experiences um, in a way that helps them uh, really hone in on the things that they want to spend their time on. Because as we saw at the beginning, um, there's a lot of time outside of the classroom, but I know students have a lot of options and a lot of things pulling them in different directions. And so we want to make sure that what they're, um, what they're getting involved in is the most um, productive outcome in order to help what it is that they want to accomplish. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we know that involvement is so important. What resources are available specifically for students who may not be accepted to a closed group or a closed club, such as a fraternity, um, or a sorority, an a cappella group, a competitive sports group, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, th there are a small number of groups mm -hmm. that have auditions or applications. Um, some of those are nationally affiliated, and so those um, membership requirements are sort of dictated through those national affiliations, and some are talent or expertise related. Mm -hmm. um, those groups make up a really small portion of the student groups that we have on campus. And so first of all, I, th I think I would just stress that um, if that has been the experience of your student, um, that they wanted to be involved in a student group and were um, denied that opportunity through these membership um, uh, requirements or criteria, um, that is really a small subsection of the student groups that we have on campus. And so I would, again, uh, encourage them to identify some of the things that they want to get out of their student involvement um, and then um, either make an appointment with us and come mm -hmm. in and talk with us or um, go through those listings on WUGO to, to really do a little bit of research about that. Um, I think really the what we always start with when we talk with students about getting involved on campus is what do you what do you want to get out of it and how can we help you get the most out of it and so um, we are here to help with that with that journey so to speak and um, so I think that our office is is a is a healthy resource the other thing that I would suggest too is residential life and the RA and the WUSA program through first year center mm -hmm. I think again those student um, connections and 
um, those peer leadership roles uh, can really relate to a student who might be struggling with wanting to be a part of something um, or not knowing what they want to be a part of. And those students can really help lead a student through that process because more likely than not, they've experienced that too in a way that can be um, really helpful for a student to understand that they're, they're not the only one. Mm -hmm. Are there systems in place to support students who may not have the financial capability to join a certain student group or mm -hmm. organization? Yeah, I'm glad that you asked that question. Um, just last year, uh, Student Union endowed an opportunity fund mm -hmm. that is um, facilitated through the Office of Student Success that allows for students to apply for funds, request funds that specifically go to their co-curricular involvement and experiences. So if they were to, um, if there was a membership fee, for instance, or if they even really wanted to buy a ticket to go and see a cultural show, they could, they could ask um, and be funded that, um, that money. I think that that, um, that grant is up to $300 every academic year. And um, I think that that is one of those um, things that was really important to Student Union as they were um, discovering what were some of the inhibiting factors of students getting involved on campus. And so they set up that fund. So I think that that is, um, that that's available specifically for the co-curricular experience. Um, I know that Student Financial Services also has some other mm -hmm. funding opportunities and are always really, really helpful to explore um, what's out there for, for students who need additional financial support. Um, but the opportunity fund, the Student Union Opportunity Fund is specifically for the co-curricular experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have some families of older students or upperclassmen students. Mm -hmm. Can older students such as juniors or seniors still get involved in student groups? I've heard that groups only want younger students so that they can stay in the group for all four years. Um, absolutely, older <laughs> students are, are encouraged to join. Um, we have many older students who um, really their first or second year, they really are focused on their academics. They want to get their bearings. They want to understand what kind of time they have and how to manage that. And so it's not until their junior year when they feel really confident in being able to make a commitment to a student group, either in a leadership capacity or otherwise. And um, I know that all of our student groups um, and our, our undergraduate students definitely would say um, that having older students, whether they're new to the group or have been longstanding members, is always helpful in mm -hmm. discovering the best way to, um, you know, the best way to do an event or the best way to advertise the event or um, really, more importantly, just to have that one-on-one -on -one mentorship and relationship. So those older students are very, very <laughs> much valued. Is it common for majors or departments to offer clubs or supplement, uh, offer clubs or organizations that supplement their field of study outside of a classroom? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that um, uh, we have a really, really great partnership with our academic areas. Mm -hmm. um, I think in most cases, those uh, student groups are initiated by students who are looking for ways that they can extend that academic experience, mm -hmm. but in a way where they sort of have a little, little bit more control over defining what that is. Um, and then some of those academic uh, groups are nationally affiliated and are um, really governed by those national practices. And But um, I think that there is, a, there is a pervasive understanding at Washington University that the academic experience um, is broader than the classroom. And I think that the partnerships that we have with our faculty um, in those different academic areas and our student services areas within those academic schools um, really, really demonstrates that. So it sounds like there's a lot of really rich ways to get involved here on campus. Is it common for students to get involved in community outreach through processes that are not affiliated with WashU? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned, when we looked at that slide around you know, what student groups really define themselves and what's the priority for them. Mm. That civic and community engagement piece is really important for our students. And so whether it's we have student groups on campus that's pr that primarily focuses on um, being involved in the greater St. Louis community, or um, we have offices on campus that really specialize in connecting students to the greater St. Louis community. We have um, a, a really uh, 
um, rich uh, drive from our students to make those connections. And I think either one, whether it's a student group who's initiating that, setting up tutoring or, or however that, that is, or working with an office who has those standing mm -hmm. partnerships, um, the students are able to, individual students are able to make those connections with St. Louis. Great, thank you. So we have a family member who asks, if my student has missed retreats that were hosted in the fall, mm -hmm. will they be able to attend either next year or in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of the um, leadership programs that I talked about, um, out of those, those uh, the couple that happened in the fall were, were Emerging Leaders, mm -hmm. um, Destination Q, um, and then, like I said, Disney just happened over winter break. And those are all annual programs that reoccur. And so definitely, and we don't really have any sort of requirement about it must be a first year student or must be a junior or anything like that. We really open that up to all of our students. And so those, those, are, um, those are available on a rolling basis for sure. And then I think that the, in the springtime, um, you know, there are still opportunities for those experiences to happen in the spring. Socially just leadership happens in the spring. Um, and then the LEAD program, I think, is, um, is a newer program, mm -hmm. really going to be fortified by that student involvement. And I think we'll see a lot of spring um, activities and involvement coming from that um, group in a way to really sort of gear up for, for the fall as well. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. If my student is part of a group and commits a violation of the student conduct policy, what would happen to their membership in that group? Well, I, I think it depends. Um, it depends on what that policy is. It depends on the student conduct process. We do have a separate student conduct process. Well, it's not separate, but we do have a student group student conduct um, process um, because we. it is very important for us to make sure that our student groups are, are functioning within the code as well. And so sometimes if a student group violates a, a student code of conduct, um, that is a process that we work through with that student group and really define what those um, um, the responsibility and accountability for that is. If it's an individual student who is um, violating the code, and goes through that student conduct pro process, um, then that is um, uh, oftentimes a negotiation between the student and the student group leadership, and um, off, very often is case dependent on what those um, specifics are about that case. But I will say that our students have been very diligent in being mm -hmm. able to um, understand how to define the best process to really work through that. Um, and that's what I would consider one of the great lessons of student group leadership is being able to work in sort of a microcosm of a, of a larger <laughs> um, community and be able to sort of negotiate what, what um, those conversations are and how that impacts you know, the greater group um, and the community at large. And so those are conversations that students are having with one another, which I think are very important skills to mm -hmm. learn um, and move to move forward with. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can any student become involved in something like student employment if they're interested? Yeah, I think that um, we have many student employment opportunities on campus across the board. Mm -hmm. And those, the difficult part about that is that those application processes are, happen at different times. Um, it's not a centralized process um, as offices are, are interviewing and hiring at different times based on what their needs are. Um, however, I would say that the Career Center acts as the best centralizing unit of that of, of that process and many of our offices um, go through the Career Center and use that posting system as a way of recruiting their student employees. The other aspect of, about that, um, the student employee piece is the, uh, the work study piece and mm -hmm. Student Financial Services works hand in hand with departments um, to help um, uh, link up students who have that financial benefit um, and are interested in working in an on-campus location, which we would highly recommend, um, and then um, offices who are looking for students um, uh, for particular jobs and employment. So there is a little bit of um, coordination as it relates to those specific things, and, and the Career Center is probably the best place to start to find an, over, an overall listing of those. Thank you. We're going to ask one last question for the evening. As a reminder, any questions that were not able to be answered during this webinar will be addressed via email directly to the person who posed that question. Leslie, thank you for all the information that you've shared tonight. Um, for our last question, what is one last piece of advice for families of WashU students looking to get involved on campus? One last piece of advice. I would say that um, 
it's real important for your student to um, to be able to step out of their comfort zone and do some explore, do some exploring. Mm -hmm. um, college is a great time to be able to do that and to try something new, do something different, um, and really put themselves out there. And they're able to do that at Washington University in a lot of different ways. And it doesn't necessarily have to be scary. Um, I think it can be exciting and it's something that we can help your student walk through. So if that's something that um, your student, whether they're a first year student or a junior or even a senior and are looking to take advantage of an environment that will allow them to try something that they've never tried before, the co-curricular experience is, is kind of made for that. So I, I would say, I would say take a chance and uh, discover something new. Leslie, the information you provided this evening is extremely helpful. I'm confident that our families of WashU students learned a lot from your presentation. Families, we hope you learned some valuable information this evening. Stay tuned for our next webinar, a conversation about pre-health programs occurring on Wednesday, February 19th. You'll be able to register for this webinar at families.wustl.edu. We'll see you then.